Hello, everybody. This is Kirk Spano, Stocks of the Week for Fundamental Trends and Margin of Safety Investing. We have a new format for the uh, piece to make it a little bit easier to look at it every week. So we're going to run through that really quickly. Stocks of the Week, you can see it on the screen. New format, very pared down at the top, give you the links on how to use this. You have your technical outlook. Uh, the file is by default named America. I like it, so we're gonna keep it. That is the screening that I have done every week so that you can see what the oscillators are all saying. And again, if we go to the oscillators, very little in the oversold area. So not a lot that's uh, priced for buying or even selling cash secured puts on. If we flip that around, we see an awful lot of stocks that are overbought or getting close to overbought on a weekly basis. So that means that these signals are, are, are telling you to be careful. We're gonna start with the focus trades. We will take a look at Sirius Satellite. And what you can see is that it has been tracing our chart almost perfectly. And I think the breakout here is looking like it's gonna run up to 12 pretty quickly. So if you don't own this, you know, get in on it while you can. Ford, I'm doing a little new tool here for you so that we can see what the expected range is. So this is really where I, I see it over the next three, four years. I think it can make a run at $40 a share. And I think the $20 a share is almost inevitable at this point. Uh, it, it's breaking out of our preferred buy zone. Uh, so any Jitterbugging in here, you can sell puts or buy the stock, I think. If it does get back in here, go ahead and, and add, add aggressively. Palm Castle, you can see that it's been chopping along. It touched our preferred buy price at about 150 about two weeks ago. And I think um, you let it come back because it's, it's got a pretty clear pattern here that it looks like it'll come down again. I don't know if it quite gets to 150. Depends on the strength of the market, whether or not interest rates continue to rise. Uh, the reflation trade has run, run into some bumps in the road. Uh, but I think with the amount of money coming into the market on the fiscal side, even though it's going to be slow to get in here, and the Federal Reserve clearly not looking to completely back off the pedal, any correction should be met with some buying. Uh, the question becomes is how serious will these corrections become? So I don't know that there's any reason to chase anything, uh, but you have to also make sure you scale into your positions. So with Crown Castle, you know, you can nibble on it at 150, but you know, you should take a look, see if it gets to 140. And if the markets really get choppy on rising interest rates, you know, all the way down under 120 probably. So don't blow your wad. Let it come down to here and check the momentum on the downside before you buy. But 150 to 140 seems to be pretty legit. It jitterbugged here, broke through, came back down. Uh, and that's what your warning, that's your warning sign here that it could get down into the 120s. But if the world does start to reflate and things look good, this is one of the best REITs out there, pays a decent dividend, and there's going to be uh, quite a lot hitting the, mod the bottom line because they don't have a lot of CapEx left to do. They're really going to start collecting a lot of money um, on a net basis pretty soon. Next era is probably our favorite utility. And it has gotten to the, the wide end of the buy zone. But again, I think this should serve as a warning as yeah, somewhere that it could go if there's any type of a shock. So again, start to scale in, I think right around mid, mid 60s, uh, but hold a little powder to buy it again in the mid 50s. And if it gets down to the mid 40s, then that's where you probably fill up your entire position. Inder Morgan still sitting around in our buy zone. Again, if you don't own this, I think you really need to. Uh, could it come down a dollar or two for sure? It's, it, it's commodity linked, anything in the commodities can do that. So with Kinder Morgan, I think that we've seen the absolute bottom. 
And this is looking to me like it's getting ready to break out. Again, don't forget with Kinder Morgan, there's going to be a strategic transaction at some point. And honestly, I can really see Berkshire Hathaway buying Kinder Morgan. So if Berkshire Hathaway and Kinder Morgan can work out a deal where there's some tax advantages for Richard Kinder, uh, I could see this one getting bought out, you know, low to mid 20s. I don't think he'd sell below, before there, and I don't think Buffett would buy up here. So this low to mid 20s range, I think, is a pretty strong reason to think that uh, this one really starts to catch some M&A attention. If it breaks through, uh, it clearly can run up to about 30 bucks a share. But again, that would be on speculation. So I don't know where we want to sell up here, but I just know that we want to buy down here. There, there's really not much bad that can happen at this point. And Merck, with them having a piece of the vaccine business now through their collaboration with J&J, &J, you start taking a look here and you go, well, it touched our buy zone at 72 and we, we sold some puts on that. If it gets down here to 70-ish and you're the right type of investor for this company. Now, this is not a growth stock, I don't think, but this is one of those growth and income stocks. I think from the right price, you can average you know, a low double digit return on total return, 13, 14, 15%, which is, you know, what we'd hope to target when you figure in the dividends. So if you can get it down in here, and especially if it drops back down to, you know, a 2018 price, you know, which wasn't that long ago, uh, I think you're in good shape. But take a look at where this tests. Here's the 618 line. And over here, it tested it three times. So this price here in the upper 60s is a pretty legitimate buy price. So as you get closer to 70, you really got to take a look at Merck and say, well, if I'm a retiree and I want something in this space, and this is one of the better companies for uh, immunology, uh, I have to take a look at this because we're going to need more vaccines. And whether it is for COVID-19 or some variation or the next super flu, I think it's becoming relatively apparent that Merck has a pretty solid future ahead of itself. Again, with this other business divisions too, I don't know that you're going to see the to the moon sort of thing anymore, but could it drift back over a hundred on some sort of a big rally, some optimism, the next, next bout of hyper optimism? Sure. Can it beat the market by several points Can it average a low double digit return? I think so. I, I do think that it can do that because it has the good dividend and just doesn't have a ton of downside. These charts have all been updated. I'm filling in the action that you'll want to take. I'm almost done with that. Have really to do most of the dividend stocks yet. So we're going to finish this up and get this out so that you have some things to focus on and some ideas of where you really should be buying based on more current trends. What kind of questions do we have today? What do you want to take a look at on the charts? So Lockheed Martin did bounce right off. I mean, this is, this is the third chart or fourth chart we looked at where there was a spot where it touched the top of our buy range, our preferred buy range. Um, this trend though is pretty noticeably down. So I think you get another chance and I think it does set a new low. Uh, somewhere between, you know, somewhere around 300, 290, maybe the 280s. I, I think it ends up in this box in the next couple of months. So I wouldn't get too, um, too hyper about getting this one. Uh, if it does fall down to about 340 and you want to fire off a cash secured put, uh, feel free. But I think that this chart to me really looks like it's going to come down here. Yeah, I might get up to 375, 377, 378 first. But I think most likely we have a lot of stocks that are going to end up hitting the bottom of our orange boxes here this summer by, uh, by fall, I would think. And maybe maybe it takes till the end of the year. Again, a lot of things are going to depend on what the tax bill is as to how severe things get at the end of the year. But it's pretty clear the capital gains are going to get changed.
It's just a matter of at what level of capital gains do you have to pay a higher rate? And I've heard numbers around 140,000 of capital gains above just applies as income. I've heard around 400,000, I've heard at a million. So we'll see, and as I heard, I, I've read. So somewhere between 140,000 a year in capital gains and a million, at some point it'll just turn into income. So the small investor like us, um, and even the house flippers, I don't think are gonna get soaked. I, I really actually think they're gonna change the capital gains rate to just count as income after a million bucks. And that would really, I think, be effective, to be honest with you, but it would, would uh, uh, read some selling. Now, in this particular stock, I don't think you'd see it. I don't think there's a ton of embedded gains for people to protect anymore. I think they've sold it on some of these rips, and they probably sell it if it gets to here. So this, this orange box just looks hot on to me. And going back several years, I'd have a hard time seeing it get much under 280. But in the 280s and 290s, that looks like the one, man. I think that Lockheed Martin is probably calling out for you there. Not a focus stock. Yeah, if you're dying to own this one, it looks like it's good. So that's probably your wide buy zone. And it's hitting it right now, but again, in a choppier market, I think you have to look at the 618 line here, just being your more legit target. This has a pretty narrow range in my opinion. Pretty narrow range here. If it falls through here though, it's got a long way to fall. I think upper 20s is where you want to try to get it. At 33, maybe you're splitting hairs. Uh, I think this run up here was clearly not justified. And yeah, I think you have to ask, was this run up justified? I think I'd probably even go to here. Nah, I think they held that pretty nicely. Not a lot of history up in this area, but again, resistance, resistance. So probably that's pretty strong support. Yeah, I guess you got to go here. Ah, man, it, it held, it held that line when it came to here. Yeah, I think this is probably right, but there's elemental risk. There's an element of risk here. All right. Um, I don't know that you want to be too aggressive with any of these, but this is, you know, I don't know what the dividend is. What's the dividend on this one? Five percent, yeah. I wouldn't be placing a whole lot of love on the infrastructure bill just just yet. It's going to not get passed for six more months. Be six more months after that before that money starts coming in. You're gonna make me follow Pinterest, aren't you? So right at that decision point, huh? It's jitterbugging around. It really likes that line, doesn't it? I'd be pretty surprised if it doesn't end up in the orange zone. I'd really be pretty surprised. That looks like it became support. I think this one has a super narrow range too. I don't think you're killing yourself if you buy it. Man, that's, how's that for a narrow range? I, I really think that line is the spot where it, it probably holds. I almost don't even want to uh, put in the zone there. Let me, get, let me get rid of this. Let's use a daily chart. And why do you use a daily chart on this one? Does anybody remember? Why do we want to use a daily chart on this one? Nobody? Bueller? 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 Because it's a whole new company, basically, right? It used to be oil infrastructure back here. And now it's everything infrastructure. So it's essentially like a company that went through a reorganization and that's pretty much precisely what it did. So if you are a fund investor, and you probably are, I think it's really close where we can buy it. You know, middle thirties, 
I just, I don't really fear it going below here. Right here, you see where it hits, comes back, gets through, then it comes back. So resistance, resistance becomes support. I think that's probably pretty legit. Uh, could it get to the middle the upper 20s? Absolutely. Uh, but if I had to have a preferred range, I think I'd take the top. So look, look at how it hugs that line and then finally goes through. I don't think a lot of these companies are going to come down a ton because of what everybody's anticipating, right? You just talked about the infrastructure. Well, somewhere in that orange box, I think is pretty legit. And I think you probably have a target price up there somewhere, a couple of years out. Now I had, it, I had an order hit right there. I think you can actually use a daily chart on this one because it's just a whole new paradigm for this, this one. This is a 618 line. You should not ever ignore that one. This one's going to have a pretty wide range just because of the huge run-up I had. Again, I'd be willing to buy the top of the zone. I think you have to respect that it could go down to the middle 40s. So when these have the super wide zones, there's nothing you can do other than just be a little bit more cautious on your entries. But again, this price is a little under 90. I had orders hit at 88 over at TD Ameritrade. Um, so it must have been that day. I, mean, I just got super lucky to get it, I guess. And then it ran up. And on the more conservative accounts, I trimmed pretty quick, like right at 100, 102. And I haven't bought any back. I think it probably gets into this range, 80-ish. Kind of surprised if it didn't. Is that 75, 75, 80? Between these two lines, I think it's pretty legit. Um, so I think that's about where you're at on that. Save that one. We got, what else? Did I miss any? No. GDX. I mean, it bounced right off there, huh? Does it go back in here? It might. If the dollar gets a little stronger, interest rates go up a little. But I just don't see it breaking through here. You know, remember, this is gold stocks, not gold. And they don't correlate perfectly. Remember, these companies are going to make money either way. Whether gold stays choppy or whether gold screams higher. I think the, the thing you should be looking for is, is this going to do well or is it going to do really well? I mean, I think that's what you're looking at. These overlap. That, that screams out a target. Where did my target go? I think that screams out a target up here. Use a daily chart just to get the lines perfect. Switch back to the weekly chart, make it easier to look at. There's a better looking. Bullseye here, I thought. Hmm. All right, we'll use that one. I think the target's probably up there somewhere. But again, don't be impatient. If you don't own this, probably get it here on 33. See that resistance? That resistance? That's probably your super support. I have a hard time even seeing getting back down here. I don't know what it would take to get back there. You'd have to have a pretty broad market sell off. We'd really have to have some bad things happen for it to get down in this area. And it'd be tough for it to get to the lower 20s too. B cell's not a company that I cover. Just because you want to break. Okay, so now it's a sell. It's a screaming sell. Unless they're making money hand over fist. Well, are you saying a bear flag or a bull flag? What are you trying to say there? Okay. Yeah. Right. That is support here. Then jump up. Yeah, it definitely could come down here though. I mean, I, I think it's. I'd have a hard time seeing it not setting one more low. I'd be wrong. Did the risk go down? No. 
but I've been telling you that since December that we could be looking at a 2015, 2016 situation where your corrections are rolling. There's enough liquidity out there that maybe the whole market doesn't go down, but a quarter or a third or a half of it goes down or two thirds of it goes down. You've seen a, a pretty broad consolidation in the big tech stocks. Do they have another leg down? I don't know. I mean, Apple, Amazon, Google, none of them are tremendously expensive. It's all these Kathy Wood stocks that have gone through the roof. And what happens to that when liquidity is lower? As we, and we're seeing liquidity start to dry up. So as Meb Faber and I talked about today, you're going to start to see the market parse out the winners and the losers and start to kill the zombies one at a time. It's going to be hard to trade this. You're not going to get a layup, I don't think. And if we get a layup, it'll be because of some sort of event that drives it, I think. But I think this is important to parse out what each thing is worth. When we take a look at the top couple of holdings here, we can say Barrick and Newmont, Barrick's way undervalued and Newmont's probably a little undervalued or fairly valued at this point. So you have to do things one at a time. We got to do the work. I think I'd be pretty comfortable with a limit order about here, 29. In the middle of the day, you might get it. I actually have a pretty hard time seeing this go under here. But it's gold. You never know. You never know. See where this is jitterbugging? Imagine this didn't happen. Probably would have kept jitterbugging. Not much. Somebody asked how much value do I put on Barracks Copper Mining? Not much. Gold and silver is 80 some odd percent of their business. No, and, and, and going back to what Ezek said or asked, no, the stock market risk has gone up in the last six months, not down. It's just not going to all happen at once, it doesn't look like. It could, but it doesn't look like it. Are there any other mega cap stocks? No, I don't even think I'd buy Facebook right now. One thing to get the business part of it right, which I think I have, uh, the other part is, you know, at what price? And Zuck is going to say that his company is strong every time, no matter what. Uh, don't, don't ever think that Zuck's not lying to you. Zuckerberg's a very accomplished liar. So be careful with him. I mean, it, it did come down here and bounce off twice. So maybe 250-ish is, is, is the best we're going to hope to get it at. And you know, maybe we don't get a chance at 225 or 200. But I would think between now and Christmas, we do. I think it gets down back in here at least to 225-ish, 220-something by Christmas. And again, I'm thinking about a couple of things. One, more normalized valuations. And two, uh, a tax bill that's going to cause some people to trim. And third, once the trimming starts and liquidity is lower, it doesn't take much to manipulate this down by the hedge funds for short periods of time. There's bad months in the market. And I think while it will be rotating, maybe we get a bad October or a bad December, maybe a bad September. And I, I think there'll be a, a month where you can do a lot of shopping, but until that month happens, uh, you really gotta pick your spots one at a time. And somebody's asking about SPACs, these post IPO SPACs that are trading with a TED handle, uh, but that haven't announced a deal yet, I think those are pretty low risk ways to, to speculate with some money. I think it's that easy. So how much are you gonna get back if a company doesn't do a deal? Well, first of all, first off, check the date on when they have to have a deal by. Anything that doesn't have a, a, a near-term date, I think you're okay with. But anything that 
you know, came public a year ago or a year and a half ago, they're closing in on their, their deal dates where they have to have a deal or they give the money back. You know, I, I'd avoid the ones that are short, but short term, but you know, as long as you have a deal date that's into next year somewhere, I think you're good with buying any of these in the tens, you know, uh, Fortress Capital. I, I love, I, I still, I love that management team. So they're not going to buy something that sucks because it'd be bad for them. And remember, the management doesn't want a crappy deal. And at a minimum, they want people to bid it up initially, at least, uh, so they can get some of their money out. But and handle on some of these SPACs, you know, if they if they announce a good deal, it's going to go up probably over 20. And if they don't announce a deal, you're going to get nine-ish bucks back, right, because of expenses and things like that. So it's just, there's just not a lot of downside risk there. You know, you're getting 5, 10, 20 to 1 risk reward. It's just, they're, they're just good equations. That's what you want, right? You know, anytime you can get a lot of potential upside with very minimal downside, you should be doing it. And it's not something that happens very often. But these pre-deal, post-IPO, but pre-deal SPACs with 10 handles, you know, that's what you're getting. And, and especially the ones that are right at about 10, I mean, all, all you're potentially out are the expenses on on the on the on the spec if they have to undo something, uh, or if they, you know, if they get a deal, but nobody loves the deal, you know, then there's some some other expenses. I mean, that that's about the worst thing that can happen is a deal gets done and nobody likes the deal, so you want to cash out. And in those cases, it might not be, you know, you might only get eight bucks back. That's what the studies are saying. So. You know, I would be buying some of these specs. As far as selling um, puts, if you take a look, um, you can't get a ton of money on the puts, but for a month out, you can maybe get 2%, 3%. That's not so bad, right? And maybe instead of buying these, you just sell puts across the board. And just understand that they're small percentages, but if you're holding the money in cash, not such a bad deal. Anything else before we get rolling? I don't see anything else up on the chat board. No? All right. All right. I'll get this edited and up. I'll finish up that article. And the Meb Favor thing goes to the producer probably in the morning. So that should be up in the next day or two. Seeking Alpha will turn it around pretty quick. All right. Everybody take care.